We got him. All right. Hey guys, what's going on? So today I'm going to be comparing various rankings from Craig Button, Bob McKenzie, Corey Promen, Elite Prospects, and myself. Just doing a little bit of a statistical analysis here. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> let's just get right into it. Um, I have a Google Doc here, obviously, with each of these uh, guys' lists. And this is based off of my top 50. So the players here on the left is the top 50 in my order, although I also have a column here uh, just to visualize that. And yeah, so we got Wright at number one, of course, all the way down to Philip Bystet, who is my number 50 guy. And the number in the right column here is the average draft position. So what I did is I just average, I added up all of the uh, rankings, basically, that these guys got from these various people, myself included, then averaged it and just assumed that like that is going to be their average draft position. So you kind of think of it I, a little bit like a fantasy draft, I guess. Uh, because a lot of these numbers are not going to end in an even number because that's that's how averages work. Also, a couple of these guys were not ranked by every player, so or by every person, I should say. Um, some of these lists only went to top 100, and some of these guys were outside of a top 100. For example, Grudinen was outside of Craig Button's top 100, which is hilariously bad take i think uh but a couple of these other guys later uh isaiah george also off craig button's list that's also pretty interesting uh elias Pedersen, interesting was not on craig button or i believe this is bob mckenzie yeah so he was off both their lists and it looks like that's about it so now i'm just gonna go ahead and sort these guys by ascending i believe and there we go so this is the average order then although i do have to get rid of this let's see if i can just delete this row yeah there we go for some reason it just put the top titles in the middle of the oh but these are different charts hang on i'll be right back Okay. So I went ahead and sorted them by average draft position, and what we get is basically a average ranking of these players. So right at 1.4 is the highest ranked player available, and he's my top ranked player, so so far so good. Uh, Slavkovsky is the second highest ranked player at 1.8, and he is my second highest ranked player so again so far so good but it is interesting to note how close those guys are in the average rankings 1.4 to 1.8 basically you're talking like less than half of a draft position uh between them which if you're talking like the difference between pick 30 and 31 that's really minuscule difference but when you're talking about the difference between first overall and second overall that's that's pretty significant. So the fact that those are those guys are so close is pretty interesting. And this uh, is further exemplified by the fact that Logan Cooley is in fact the, her, the third highest ranked player in the averages as well. But he comes in at 3.4. So a point and a half basically behind Slavkovsky. So that's pretty interesting. Then Juracek is the fourth highest ranked player. Again, he's fourth on my board at 4.4 .4, so i guess it's a relatively safe bet to say he's going to go fourth overall but who knows nemich is the fifth highest ranked player at 5.4 i am at seven but i could certainly see him going at five a lot of people have your check and nemich going back to back or at least they have them ranked back to back so that wouldn't surprise me too too much although I don't know, Philly, they they could take Nemich. Uh, then we have Kamel at 6, Gauthier at 7. This is one that I really disagree with. Obviously, right here, I have him at 15. 
His average position, though, is 8.8. .8, and of course, I have him ranked the lowest. So I am actually bringing him down. All the experts, I guess you could say, have him ranked higher than I do. Elite Prospects is the next closest at 11. So it's safe to say that he will go higher than 8th, most likely. Again, nothing is for certain in any NHL draft, but especially this one, I feel like it's pretty much wide open, almost right from the very beginning. So Gauche at 8, sure, why not? Savoy is the next ranked, next highest ranked player, uh, averaging 10th. I have him at five. I like Savoy a lot. I, I'm the highest on him out of any of these guys. Um, Craig Button has him at 19. That is insultingly low for Savoy. I don't understand how you could have him that high. Everybody else is pretty, uh, pretty much in agreement with him at nine, eight, and nine for McKenzie. Um, who is this? Pronman and Elite Prospects, respectively. They pretty much agree that he should be top 10. Next, we have LeCarrie Mackey uh, at 12, although he's actually 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. He's the ninth ranked player with an average ranking of 12. Um, sure, I have him at 14, but uh top 10 sure uh uh button and mckenzie both have him going in the top 10 so i think it's a relatively safe bet that he goes top 10 because i think those guys although i know that those guys rely a little bit more on what actual scouts are saying so the general consensus among scouts seems to be that he's a top 10 talent now i'm not going to go over every single player we have here um you could always pause the video and look at these guys average draft position yourself again it is this column on the far right mintyukov though is an interesting one of course he is the very next guy uh the 10th overall ranked uh player with an average ranking of 13.4 i like mintyukov quite a bit um i believe this actually makes him the third highest ranked defenseman, which is pretty interesting because it felt to me that Korchinski was most people's third overall ranked defenseman. And you know, Corey Prom is ranking here at 21. Well, that's actually that would actually be bringing him down. Let's see, Korchinski's lowest ranking is 19, and that is by Pronman and then Elite Prospects. So those two combined, I, I must be bringing him down overall. Lambert is an interesting one because I have him at 8, which is by far the highest of anybody else. Elite Prospects at 14, not too far behind. Promen at 15, and uh, McKenzie at 16. Um, Craig Button, of course, had him at 42, which is insultingly low for Lambert, I think. I guess Button thinks he's going to be uh, Atu Ratu 2.0. Maybe he is. It doesn't sound like that's what's going to happen. It sounds like he's going to go around the middle of the first round. Um, but yeah. Interestingly, that makes him, let's see, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. The 15th ranked player on average with an average ranking of 19. Kind of interesting. Now, at Jagger Furcus is another player I want to talk about. Again, I'm the highest of anybody on him. I have him at 11. Uh, Craig Button has him at 16. Elite Prospects has him at 20. And then he's at 32 and 34 for Promen and McKenzie, respectively. Average ranking of 22.6. I still think that's quite low for Fergus. Obviously, I have him at 11. Uh, I think he's really, really good. And I'm hopefully, like, this is the one player or one of two players, really, that I will die on this hill arguing for these guys to go higher in the draft, and they probably will go. And I really look forward to four or five years from now. Maybe we can look back on this and see if I was right. I'm I'm really, really hopeful about Fergus. And then the other guy is... Where is he? Probably quite low. In fact, I know he's quite low. 
Vladimir Grudin in here. Um, Craig Button does not have him ranked, period. And I believe his rankings were top 100, so he's outside of Button's top 100. McKenzie had him at 88. Promin had him at 116. Elite Prospects has him at 31. And I have him at 10. So that is a, obviously a huge discrepancy. The largest difference, I believe, between any individual rankings, mine being at 10 and Promin at 116, that's a difference of 106 spots. I don't believe there's any other player that has that much of a difference. Although Grudinen, of course, is also not ranked at all by, or not ranked in the top 100, I should say, by Craig Button. So theoretically, that difference would be even larger. His average position is 61. And again, he's at least got to be a first round talent. I think Elite Prospects there is on the right track. Obviously, they're all professionals, so they know better than I do, technically speaking, I guess. But, I mean, I I think Rudinen is the most mobile, explosive skater in the draft, at least amongst defensemen. Uh, right up there with Brad Lambert, really, in terms of his skating. And I think for a defenseman, that's pretty much the most valuable skill you can have. He There is definitely room to improve in terms of his offensive potential. But I think his transition game is also pretty good. And he is a lot more tenacious on the puck than you might expect for an undersized defenseman. So having him going that low, I mean, he's almost guaranteed to be a steal at this point. He's definitely not going top 10, like my, my crazy uh, ranking of him. Definitely not not realistic, I guess, in terms of where he's actually going to go. But if he goes like the third or fourth round, like the Sharks don't have a second rounder. They are my favorite team again, so I will mention them here. If the Sharks get Grudinen with their third round pick, I might uh I might have to change my pants. Let's just let's just put it that way. Uh Christian Cairo is another interesting one. He's has an average draft uh position of 54. Actually, that's pra- fairly reasonable for Cairo, but he's another guy with a ton of upside, so he could outperform that uh that draft position by quite a bit. Uh, and yeah, Julian Lutz is a guy I like. His average draft position is 40. I have him at 37, so I think it's pretty pretty much on the money there. Uh, definitely worthy of a top 40 pick, I think. Uh, not a guy with a ton of upside, but he could play a very solid bottom six role in the NHL, play that role pretty effectively. Lane Hudson at 36 is uh is interesting that's actually higher than i was expecting for him especially given his size i'm at 38 so these guys are actually on average higher on him than i am which i definitely was not expecting um elite prospects has him at 47 what's really bringing him up is um let's see who is this again i believe this is Corey promen have him at 24 that's pretty interesting uh that's definitely bringing his average up there and then finally, the last player I do want to talk about here is Gleb Trikasov, because this is another player that I have a big disagreement with the general consensus on. I have him at 9. Elite Prospects has him at 22, which I think is fairly reasonable, especially in terms of where you're actually going to draft this guy. Again, I think he's ninth overall in terms of his talent, in terms of where he actually goes in the draft. Probably wouldn't draft him there because he will be available later. So if you're a team in that range and you're interested in Trikasov, maybe trade down, or if you have two or three first-round picks, maybe use one of your later first-rounders on him. Um, Promen has him at 51, McKenzie at 57, and Button has him at 43. So he has an average draft position of 36.4, which is actually higher than I was expecting. Uh, that would indicate that he has an outside chance, at least, of going in the first round. That would be pretty interesting to see if he actually does go in the first round, especially given his status as a Russian player. I think that's part of what's bringing down Grudinin's rankings as well, is that status as a Russian and all the uncertainty with Russian players going on these days. But uh, yeah, if Trikizov doesn't go in the first round, it looks like there's a decent chance he actually goes early on day two. Uh, So maybe he doesn't become Kaprizov 2.0. I still think that's a possibility. He could fall into the third or fourth round at which point he would be a tremendous steal. But uh, yeah, 
Let me know what you guys think of this type of video. It's a bit different. I don't think there's a lot of stuff like this on YouTube, but it is draft related content, which is what I'm all about. So if you if you want more NHL draft content, this is the channel for you. So be sure to like this video. It does help me out. I appreciate it quite a bit. Consider subscribing if you do want more of that NHL draft content. Uh, I'll put another video on screen now. So you can uh, click on that if you want to stick around for a while. If you don't, that's okay too. And whatever you do, have a nice day.